What up, everybody? We back. One Speed Podcast. Your host, Dante Trader and Bo Braid. We got a special guest for you today, you know, SB member, brother, you know, uh, UMD star linebacker, Ruben Hippolyte. What up, dog? Hey, what's going on, man? Glad to be here. Glad yes, to be sir. here. Bless. Uh, you know, just excited for this episode, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, hey, it. but before we get into the episode, we always start with a quote of the day. Quote of the day is, the only person who can stop you is you, and that quote is different because a lot of my life, I've been my own enemy, um, put on special limitations on my life and things like that, and it just hinders me, and mm-hmm. external factors never really, like, play a big role in my success, anything on and off the field, it don't even got to be sports, like, right. it's just, I'm always, my head is just always running, always criticizing myself, but it, once you can get past that, like, the sky's the limit. No, I think I think that quote really hit home for me too, um, especially after this past season. And I know we'll get into more more into that as the show go on. But definitely, like the only person that's in the way of you know your own success is yourself. Like I feel like you know the time you put in, and like what you put in is what you're gonna get out uh, every time, and uh, it never fails. Um, the work is gonna show. So whether you put the work in or don't, or you don't, uh, it's gonna show when uh, you know the lights come on. So. Uh, I like that quote right there, for sure. Yeah, I agree 100 percent for real. You know, you you can't really cheat no process. You really cheat yourself. You know, that that work gonna show show up just like you said for mm-hmm. real. So I mean, yeah. Hey, but tell us, Ruben, how was it? You know, on the come up to Maryland. Tell us who. Tell us all who Ruben Hippolyte is. Yeah. So uh, originally from Broward County, Florida. Um, crib. Yeah, man. <laughs> crib, you know, uh, grew up. Uh, I hated football. And like, yeah, a lot of people don't. A lot of people give me that same reaction. Like, I hated football coming up. Uh, I didn't like the sport at all. Uh, but uh, my dad, he kept forcing me to play. Like, he just kept putting me in, signing me up, whatever. Uh, so, you know, I come around, uh, come around sixth grade, um, and like, you know, at sixth grade, I made a decision. I'm like, you know what? I'm a, I'm gonna sign myself up to play middle school ball, and really just, you know, lock in on the sport and, you know, see where it takes me. So. From that point on, I just started. I just started ascending, bro. Like I play running back all middle school, so like I'm scoring every time I get the ball, like every time. Right. And, like I was just physically gifted at the game, so uh, from that point on, I'm like, you know, I'm gonna just you know stick with football, and then uh, it got me a scholarship. I did want my mother to pay for, co- uh, for school, yeah. so it got me that scholarship. Um, and yeah, I'm here now, just you know taking it day by day. So a little bit about me. Yeah, yeah, shout out Mama Dukes. Yeah. Mama Dukes. You spoke on your mom. Yeah. Um, Mama Hippolyte, she's a yeah. uh, big, big mm-hmm. supporter of everybody. Right. Like, Everyone. Not just his mother, yeah. second yeah. mother and me. Mm-hmm. Talk about that relationship that you guys have and what she has with us. Even. Man, like I tell everybody, like like we, we matured together, um, especially since like my first year of high school. Um, from that point to now, like we grew up together. I, I say like matured. We really, we've been through a lot. Um, so... Just to have her support, uh, she's like my number one supporter, um, and like, like I'm saying, like you all know, like she's at every game, almost yeah. um, every event that we have, like she's supporting everybody on Instagram, whatever. So <laughs> like, uh, yeah, reacting to everybody's stories and stuff like that. So I mean, um, I'm just grateful to have her in my corner. Um, I know that I can rely on her for anything, uh, and vice versa. So we just had that, you know, that relationship. Um, it's unconditional love. So you know, you can't, you can't, you know, ask for anything more than that. So. And then just credit to what you said earlier. I mean, Lance Thompson don't want to hear that. Um, <laughs> shout out to Coach Lance. That right. you hated football. Yeah. Um, no, hated that football. Crazy, that's, yeah. that's, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. What, what about football, like, that made you not like it? And, like, what was that switch, you know, saying, I'm going to come to the University of Maryland and sign that letter of intent? Yeah. Man, it's gonna sound really soft, but I I ain't like getting dirty, man. I just I, I like you pretty boy. That's yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. That sound like, like, like I'm, I'm I'm a pretty boy at heart, and still am. Like I like the I like I like to put I like to you know dress up, dress nice, smell good. Like I didn't like the physicality of the sport. Like I just it just wasn't something that I like. But you know I learned over the years. Like you know sometimes you're not gonna like something, but you still got to do it to no, to uh, get to that point you want to get to. So um, yeah, speaking on that. Uh, I, I ain't like I ain't like ball at first. That was like the only thing that I didn't like about the sport. But as far as coming to Maryland, man, like I, I've always been that type of person that you know didn't want to do what others were doing. Like I just always been an outlier, but like in a positive way. Mm-hmm. So um, I didn't I didn't hear about anyone committing committing to Maryland. Like I know I know Dev was here. Yeah, Dev had committed. Then 
I know. Uh, was he the first? I think he was the first, and then I had committed. And I think you I commit had committed bit. down the line yeah. somewhere. Um, and then, uh, yeah, yeah, like as soon as I committed, it was a step of faith. It, it was a you know I took a step of faith, bro. Um, I, I believed in Coach Locks and what he had, like his vision. Um, it, it just sounded good, and I had a plan, bro. I wanted to come in, you know, be a big fish in a little pond. Just come in, work, earn my spot, um, earn my keep. Yeah. Um, and, and just set the tone, man. And just you know, tw- 10, 20 years from now, like when we talk about Maryland football, like I just want to be a part of that conversation. Right. Um, so that that all went that all went into this decision. And then you know, DC is like twenty minutes from here. So as far as career after, like everything is like within arm's reach, I would say. So that that was like the biggest point, biggest selling point. And like I said, I had I had opportunities to go anywhere. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, you know, uh, my heart was here. So. Um, yeah. I feel like, I feel like I'm doing a great job at you know doing what I set or what I plan to do now. So yeah, yeah, yeah I can I can agree to that. Um, I mean, we kind of all from the same mind, got all the same mindset. Like we wanted to be that, that little fish in that big pond and step out and you know with some big dogs. Like I came from a small town in Delaware, so yeah. you know it was a step out, you know, of my comfort zone to come out with y'all boys. I remember first time, you know. Being in that locker room or first time being on that field, I'm just yeah. like, what am I doing? Like, right. No, it was yeah, definitely, I definitely. I definitely relate to that. Yeah, it was definitely a culture shock coming up here uh, from down south because like I know both from the area. Yeah. So like, man, it was it was, it was definitely a, a culture shock for me. Like everybody just different up here. But you know, um, yeah. Once I got into it, I was all good. So. Yeah. But that's why y'all the men like, we be working out, putting our head down like together like. Going, uh, working out extra after practice or something, mm-hmm. and that's like, you know, we just working so one speed for real. So we do. Um, and then like, man, how's it feel that you set out what you set out to do? Like, it's about to come true. Like, you really started part of a wave of coming to Maryland. Mm-hmm. You know, guys, big time guys coming to Maryland, mm-hmm. and now you know we about to show the world some like Maryland popping and stuff. You feel mm-hmm. me? You know, so how's that feel that you really like are part of the you know concrete of this you know football team? You know. Yeah, like, I mean, like it's a blessing. Like, I just look back on it, like, our whole 20 class, yeah. like, it's just, a, it's just a, like, a special group of guys. No, for real. Like, I know, I know um, all that's left, I believe, is me, is you, and then uh, Tarheeb is still here. Yeah. Um, then, uh, that's crazy. Glaze and love. Glaze, glaze and love. I, th- I think that's that's it. I, I think so. If I'm not mistaken, if I'm missing anyone, my apologies. Oh, but, sure. yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and Glenn, of course. And yo, yeah, Glenn, yeah, of, Glenn, yeah, Glenn, too. So, yeah, no. I mean, like, it's just a blessing, like, the lives, like, mind you, we all come from different places, different aspects, different walks of life, but, like, you know, we all have one goal in mind, so yeah. I'm not going to I'm not gonna sit here and say, like, I'm a trendsetter or anything like that, like, obviously, I took I took the first step, if you will, mm-hmm. quote, unquote, but, you know, that that's a testament to, you know, me, that's a testament to Coach Locks, I mean, like, I mean, we... We got the guys that we wanted to get up here, right. and we were able to start something fresh and new. And then that led to, you know, the twenty one class coming in, twenty two right. class coming in. So far, so goals. far, and yeah. right, accomplishing goals, uh, winning more, um, setting the standard. Like it, it, it's it's a it's a snowball effect. So yeah. it's just a blessing to know that um, I was just a part of that start, that kickstart. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, like I was out Easter Sunday with RD, and we was in a car. And then he was like, he just asked me, like, how does it feel to know that uh, you're going to be talked about, you know, 10 to 20 years from now? Right. Like, like that you were to start something, right. um, you know, new and brand new for Maryland. And, yeah, man, like, I, I told him, I'm like, man, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, it's a blessing. Because, like, you know, a lot of people don't get this opportunity. So right. I'm just taking everything day by day, man, and just putting the necessary work that I need to put in to make sure that we get to where we want to go. Yeah. So. You definitely started that for I feel like because like, I know me personally I ain't gonna lie if you didn't commit I probably wasn't gonna commit. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was, when I was like looking at school I was like looking at who was on the you know already committed and stuff mm-hmm. and I was like okay we're okay yeah. okay you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know when they high school you can't do it all by yourself for you know? sure yeah so yeah uh, hey you know? hey man talking on that trendsetting you know topic yeah. um, my guy he has his own podcast his own yeah um, shout out come different come different podcast. Yeah. And, Speaking on emotional intelligence, and you're gonna see some collaboration from us um, coming up. And I'm um, speaking on, you know, your expertise. I would say, <laughs> um, let's 
let's talk about leadership and being a leader and, mm-hmm. and things of that nature. Since you are a leader, we are leaders on, you know, the Maryland football team. Just dive into that. Right. I mean, I feel leadership is a lost art in today's time, today's day and age, because uh, I think a lot of times uh, people see leadership as talking at someone and not talking to someone. Um, like, you know, me personally, like, I, like to be a great leader, you know, you have to be a great follower first. So, first of all, um, I'm big on faith. So, I follow Christ and I follow, you know, the way to go about life. And then, you know, the way to go about life, that leads to teaching others or showing others the way that they're supposed to lead as well. So, I mean, my, like, just being a, being a leader is very hard. It's very hard, it, it, and it's a challenge every day because everyone's looking at you. Like, all eyes are on you, and everyone's coming to you, and everybody is dependent on you. Um, so there's definitely added pressure, but I feel like for me, like for me personally, like, that's what I want. Like, I want, I want the expectation to be high. I want people to come to me. Um, I'm not saying I'm a savior or anything, but I'm just saying that that's going to that's gonna keep me sharp at all times and keep me focused on getting the job that I need to get done. And then, like I say every time, like using my platform that I have to inspire others. Like, that's why I play the game. So when you talk about leadership, it's not just on the field, but it's off the field as well. Just like, you know what I'm saying, leaving a mark on others. Because um, pe- people are going to remember you for how, how, you know, you made them feel. They're not going to remember you for what you did or what stats you put up or like numbers, like they're not gonna remember none of that. Like they gonna remember how you made them feel. Um, so, you know, that's why I just try and, you know, be like Christ every other day, every day, every day and just, you know, put the work in and go to work, so. Right. And, and like looking at that, like, you know, being a leader is very tough, like you, like you said. And I feel like one of the hardest aspects of being a leader is that the coach will go to you first. The players will go to you first. Yeah. And you're going to yourself first. Right. Yeah. So you, everybody's first option. So when stuff is going downhill, yeah. who, who's the coach yelling at you? Right. But when everything's going downhill, who's all 120 football players looking at? They're looking at you to say something. Right. Right. They're going to you for everything, and that's a lot of that's a lot of weight, and that's a lot of pressure. And when you mess up, and you use the guy that's on your p's and q's, and you like get on this, get on that. Yeah. But the time. You're blasted in front of everybody. It it sends a a message, bro. I think I think what helped me is understanding that everybody doesn't think like how I think, and everybody like everybody ticks differently. Like I can't talk to you how I talk to Bo. No, can't. Like I talk to you a specific way. Like it's funny story. We in practice. <laughs> uh, this was I think during last season or something like that. Um, and like. I, like last last season, I had a pretty rough season as far as like that second half because I was just coming back off of injury, right. and like my head was just in the wrong place. Like I wasn't there, so we had practice, uh, and I'm th- I'm, I think we me- we had messed up on like the previous play, or whatever. And you know Dante, he, like we we always talk. That's what we pride ourselves on talking on the yeah. field because like we gotta talk the whole down, bro. Because like if you don't, like you're gonna get beat like somehow, some shape or form, whatever. Yeah. And you know we gotta make a lot of people right. Like it's just a game of football. So Dante talking to me, and like I just put my hand up like this, like in practice, like I just put, and then he just shut up. Then we go to the sideline. He's like, "Hey, bro, you good?" I'm like, "Yeah, bro, I'm good." Like I'm saying, you just kept talking too much, and I was just not with that. And then it was cool, but like, you know, with Bo on the other hand, like I could, I think I, I think I could, ha- I have the you know ability to turn the ball and say, "Hey, Bo, like, 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 what are you doing, bro?" Like. <laughs> Lock in, bro. Like, stop doing that. You know, stupid Help me stuff. Out, like, like, yeah, just, I'm tripping, I'm tripping. Okay. Yeah, you feel me? So, like, everybody, I, I just, I just, I approach everybody differently. Um, yeah, and then to your point, like I was saying, like, you know, everybody doesn't think like me. Like, you don't think like I, how I think. You don't think, you don't think how I think. So, okay. I think, you know, and just talking about leadership again, when you go back to that, like, it's about knowing the guys you want, you taking the field with that you going to war with. Because when you know that, like, you can't be beat. Cause like if I know how you take, I know how you take, bro. Like we gonna be unstoppable. Cause like we can eat, we can each push each other in that way. So. Yeah, for real. I think another part about uh, the hard part about being a leader is you leading when you don't, you know, might not want to be. You know, you mm-hmm. might want to be like just chill. You know, might lay in the bed a little longer. You feel me? But someone's you know always looking at something. You know, even if you just out chilling for real, you know, everybody's always got an eye on you. So you gotta make sure you don't, not just on your p's and q's all the time, but just like. Going by what you tell others to do for real. Yeah, man. Yeah, because it's like, he'll call you a hypocrite. Like, right, right. I, like, you ain't doing the things you preaching. Like, 
Like mm-hmm. those days off are what days off is like you're not doing what you're usually doing. Yeah. You're usually leading and you trying to slack. You're like, yeah. what you doing? Right. And I get caught doing it. We all get caught doing this. Yeah. Like, it's like, Trader, you gonna let that slide? I'm like, oh, like I'm not trying to be it's Superman. It's easy to let it slide like, because, like, because like, because another thing you gotta face being a leader is you're gonna have to mess your face up. You, I'm sorry, you're not gonna make everybody happy. Right. Like, right. you're gonna make everybody happy. What already say? What save say? Go sell ice cream. But right. like, you're gonna mess up your face, and it gets tiring. It gets tiring. But like. I really believe people are born leaders. Like, mm-hmm. there's certain people that are just all right. Like, yeah. you're gonna be a role in all this. You're not gonna be the prominent voice or the prominent captain or the prominent leader. Like, mm-hmm. there's certain people where you just you don't consciously be like, I'm gonna be a leader. I don't think leaders constantly think that it's just how they are and the, yeah. the morals they put, right. and they just become that. And there's pros and cons to it. Like, yeah. it gets it gets tiring. So, like to your point, it's like. I don't. I don't want to harp on everything. I want to be. I want to be bros with everybody else. I want to be cool. Like I don't want to be like you know. Just the hard, a what they call it, the hard old stickler. Yeah, like, like yeah. it, it gets it gets <laughs> tough because you kind of need to connect with your boys, but still make it business. Right. So that middle ground is what you need to find as a as a leader. Right. Yeah. Right. That's what. Like, for me, like as a leader, I know one thing for me that I need to work on is like. Talk like as you said, you gotta know who you're talking to and talk to everybody like differently. Yeah. Like a lot when like stuff happens, you know, nah, I'll be he blow boy, up. He right. blows up. Yeah, right. I'll be <laughs> mad, dog. Especially like when it's something easy, I'll be, oh. I'm already man, know it. Man, yeah. but yeah. yeah like, like, it take you no time, bro. Like, man. But that's when I gotta, you know, I'm learning to fix stuff. We all learn. Yeah. yeah. You feel me? Everybody learn. But yeah. But okay. switching switching that, um, talk about finding finding your purpose in life. Um, we constantly get asked. It's like, I get asked, what's your why? And sometimes, like, throughout my career, it's like, what what, what am I doing this for? Mm. Like, what am I leaning on when I don't feel like going, when I don't feel like getting up, mm. when, when I don't want to do anything? Like, then it's like, you know, if you can't figure out your why in the state you're in, maybe that's not your calling in life. That's, maybe that's not your purpose in life. Mm. And you, and... You know, we're all religious and we all have faith. And it's like, you know, once we're on that track, finding our purpose is not the easiest thing to do. Mm. And, you know, that's something a lot of people struggle with because they're forcing stuff and not being happy. You know what I'm saying? Just, mm. you know, just touch up on that. Um, I think when, when it comes to knowing your purpose and knowing your why, um, not only should you know who you are, but you should know whose you are. Like I'm a child of God. Like I'm untouchable. Like anything that, anything that is, anything that is set out against me, like it's not gonna happen. Cause, on, that that's and that's only if I continue to continue to have faith and then continue and continue to you know stand the word and continue to just do my due diligence, bro. Like like put the time in as far as making sure that I'm prayed up and that I'm well off mm-hmm. from, from from that aspect. You know what I'm saying? So, like. I think that's the like that's the biggest point. Like you gotta know who you are and know whose you are. Like my mother always used to tell me that. So, you know, um, yeah, talking to, like speaking off your point that you just made. Like that that's my biggest that's my biggest thing, bro, for me. Cause, you know, without those two things, without knowing who you are or knowing who you belong to or who you, or who you do, you know, what you do for, like you're not gonna go far anywhere. So, you know, I'll say that for sure. Yeah, that's real. I ain't gonna. I never heard that before. Yeah. You know, who's yours and who you are. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a big thing about your why, you know, your why might like your why your reasoning for doing something might not be your purpose in your life. Mm-hmm. But I think for everything you do, you gotta have a why. Mm-hmm. It, it could be all one why, but it's gotta be. You ain't gonna succeed in something unless you have that why. All right. And, and I think that's usually what makes people different. Like if I got a if I got a why that I strongly believe in. And um, that's why I'm in the day in the gym working all the time, or you know, getting extra work or extra, extra film or something. You feel me? But if somebody's why is not like, as they don't feel as strong as they do about a why they think they have, mm-hmm. as I do about mine, then that's what can put me over them in the long run for real. Because I'm working tenfold. You feel me for mine? Right. While they uh, send back sometimes. Right. But yeah. And like, knowing your purpose and having other people, I would say external people like. Plant seeds in your life is like, yo, I think this is your call. I think this is your purpose. Like, I'll give an example my mother. Like, I'm real 
good with kids. Like, kids love me and DM me. Like, I'm always, I always, like, love right. spending time with kids and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, I play sports, but it's like, yo, like, we lose a game or I win a game. I play bad, I play this. Those kids in them stands, bro, don't care. They don't care. They don't, give, they they don't, don't care. They don't care nothing about that. Keep, yeah. Trader, can you sign this? Yeah. I like, I'm like, right. it'll make your whole, whatever just happened, just go away. And it's right. like, I get numerous DMs like, yo, can you help me? Like, you're my favorite, like, athlete, da 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 And I'm like, yo, like, I was that kid. And I didn't have a tangible person to text or, like, go after. They were all celebrities. And it's right. like, now I'm in that role. Like, I look at even my little brother. Like, he got into football and lacrosse because of me. My little cousin, they're all wearing my both of my numbers, right. playing all the time, like, Every, they hyped to tell me that they scored a goal, that they got a good grade, like, because I'm always on them. So they right. always trying to, like, think about that. So I readjusted my why. I readjusted. I'm like, maybe um, my calling is to be a mentor in life. Maybe, like, to be that person for other people. You know, I won't fully know until God gives me the sight and the vision to realize I'm walking in the right direction. But until then, I really believe, like, you know, being that outlet for these kids is something good for me. Yeah, I feel like, like, to get to where I want to go is going to take more than me. Yeah. It's, 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 just, it's just going to take more than me, bro. Like, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. Like, I'm not I'm not doing this by myself. Like, I play I play a team sport, and that's just, like, the minimal, like, that's the lowest tier of, like, example I can give. Like, it's going to take more than me, man. Like, when they say, like, it takes a village to raise a child and, and, and stuff like that, like, that's all true. Like, it doesn't just happen overnight or it doesn't just happen – um, one way, like it's a lot of things that has to go into reaching levels that you want to reach, and, and, and like being great at something. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. You probably seen it on ESPN or um, <laughs> anything. The uh, W. I mean, the college. What is it called? <laughs> Women's college. Women's bro. college. That's why my bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you drew a blank there, there, huh? Yeah, I almost threw a blank. I mean, but um, that famous matchup. Clark versus Andrew Reese, and that little taunting match that went famous, went viral, and, you know, there's all the both both sides of the debate, and, you know, we ain't wrong on that side of the athletic world, so mm-hmm. we see, you know, that competition, that, that little flavor, that little style that they play with. All right. So just what you think about that? I love it. I mean, like, I mean, we in the business of competing, right? So, yeah. like, if we're going to compete, right. let's compete. Now, as far as, like, you know, I'm not even going to get into that side. I feel like y'all know what I'm talking about. Like, I ain't going to get into all yeah, of that, yeah, but, yeah. like, you know, yeah. like, yeah. my comment to that is, like, let like let sports be sports. Like, it doesn't really matter, you know, who you are or yeah, your, your demographic, your background. It don't, it, don't, it don't matter. Like, like let sports be sports. Like, let and let people enjoy the sport for what it is, you know? Um, yeah, like, but, but you know, beside all that, like, I love it. Like, I'm a competitor. Yeah. Like I know, I know we get we get yelled at not to talk to the other team and this and that. But <laughs> yeah. I promise you, I get a chance to do that. I'm doing that yeah, for, sh- for, sure, for, sure. for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. You know exactly. what I'm saying? So, like, I'm all for it because um, I believe that you know we work hard. We work hard as athletes to you know produce a product for the public or for our supporters. And like you know, when when, when we when we handle our business, we should we should show off. I feel like yeah. I, I feel like we have the right to do that. Yeah, um, yeah. You know. Obviously, I'm more on the modest side, but you know, others are not on the modest side. And how they, you know, show show they, how they show their, you know, happiness or passion. you know their passion yeah. is how they show their passion. You know, so I mean, I'm all for it, man. Yeah, I feel you. I, I, I support I support both Andrews and Caitlin Clark. Honestly, like yeah. they both, you know, Dog, like both they're, they're both dogs. dogs. Like, they're both dogs. I'm saying so. Yeah, man, I'm for it. Yeah, I mean, shoot, I know I was a little different. I ain't gonna lie, cause I saw it. I was like, cause you know, I love, I love trash talk. Like, I love people watching people like trash talk and seeing, you know, everybody get hype and stuff. And you know, uh, but I felt different about it, cause you know, especially in that example right there, you know, game art was over for. Uh, you feel me? Yeah. Game over. Like, yeah. I, if you do it, do it like in the game while the game happening. You feel yeah. me? Like, after you score a bucket, then you know, yeah. you know, do all your thing, yeah. do do your thing. But mine was just like, the game over, film. Like, I'm not saying, like, don't do it at all, but, like, do it while you're, like, playing after you get a bucket and all that stuff. You know, you just want a championship. Right. Championship, happiest time of your, like, life for real. I mean, like, let's call it spade to spade. It, it was a little extra. I mean, I'm not going to sit up here and, like, yeah. it, it was a little bit extra. But, I mean, like, they, they won the natty. 
That one, I mean, yeah. Bro, all I see, all I see is the biggest game that we was all watching. Right. Like everybody, I ain't gonna lie, I, I didn't, lie. I didn't watch the boys side. I mean, hey, yeah, we was tuned, right. we was all tuned in to watch that matchup, no, LSU versus Iowa. Like no, we was all definitely. tuned in for that matchup, and for I was sure. like, we've been in big games. I'm sorry, like mm. we chirped after that, after that whistle blew, yeah, after that sure. ball stopped rolling. Yeah. So you, I don't even know, cause you, yeah. <laughs> we be perfect, we be right. perfect. You know how we be in the moment, but yeah. like yeah. two like crazy competitors, like. I love it. I just hate. I just hate. I don't, I don't want to say hate, but I just like how the media just made spun it, it. Uh, spun it, made it about race, made it about this. I'm like, bro, there's two elite athletes mm. doing yeah. the game and they love with a passion. Like, you don't know what they go through day in, day out mm. to get to that game. Yeah, they're going to they gonna show up. They're going to show out. Yeah. Like, I, like, that's my problem. So, like, that's what I want to talk about more. Like, the media side of the sports that we got to deal with. Like, they don't see what we go through. Mm. They don't see what the ins and outs of the game. They just seeing what's on TV. They don't know. They don't Some of them don't even understand the game. Yeah. And it's like, it's hard. Like, I be on Twitter and I'm like, man, I kind of really want to say something to this person. Yeah. Like, you saying this about XYZ, about Maryland, and then when we start winning. But I kind of yeah. feel like, that's what, this, that's what I see in this situation. It's man, like, how, how I feel about that, like, I'm going to just shoot it straight. Like, I went D1 in football. They went D1 in media. Like, right. that's their job. You feel me? Like, they, yeah. they, they get paid in that room, I get paid in this room. So, like, you know, their job is to make headliners. Their job is to, you know, stir some stir up. Some up a little bit. Like, you know, everybody like a good little story. Like a good story. You feel what I'm saying? So, I mean, like, yeah, man. Like, like that's just, that's just simply put as I can, you know, put it. Like, they do want in media. Like, they going to do, like, they, they were recruited. Right. To get that position at whatever media outlet they're at, and ball out, and ball out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like, I feel that. Yeah, like I mean, yeah, but 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 no. On a serious note, though, like 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 the media definitely you know spins things in ways where you know it's not digestible, um, and it's not like you know accepted as far as like athletes go, and just you know us us looking at it and stuff like that. But like I said, like we can only control. We can control. Like if they want to put a narrative out there, like okay, that's fine. Like let me go change it now. Let me go you know work towards. Um, not only proving them wrong, but proving myself right as far as what they say. So, right. yeah, I just I don't know, man. It, it just media gets me. It gets me all right. And up. then if you want to, like, you can milk it too. To be honest, you can milk it to your favor. My my biggest thing is, you know, just I just I just feel strongly about not crashing under that. Like you know what I'm saying, people are gonna say negative things. People are gonna say things that are not true. But I mean, you know, it's all fuel at the end of the day. So like. That's that's you though. You're mature, like yeah. you're a different individual. <laughs> yeah. Like, give somebody like that's coming up into this world of big social media. Like I see high school kids like heavy social media, and I yeah. question they even love ball, like any sport, anything. Like I'm like, you got to be able to learn how to navigate your own through this jungle of the social media. Like, how would you give advice to a young athlete? coming them to college about social media world and what they should stay away from, how they should folk like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, I say, the biggest thing I say, like, like put this down, like, <laughs> like to literally take this and just put it down for, like, an hour a day. Like, I understand, like, the world today is coming to a point where, like, like the phone is a necessity. Like, it's just, yeah. it just is what it is. But, like, like, we're getting away from reading. We're getting away from writing. Mm -hmm. Everything is texting. Everything is FaceTime, FaceTime, cellular, like post here, post there. Like, right. you know, everybody wants to post about their life. Everybody wants to post about. Ask somebody different. You know what I'm saying? Somebody. Like, like, like people posting about like what they eating for breakfast and stuff. Like, don't nobody care about that. You feel <laughs> I me? Mean? I don't. So like, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, no, no, nah, nah, but, but, but real talk though, like you got to put the phone down, bro. And, and you got to really, you know, experience your surroundings and be aware of your surroundings. Like, like the phone is not all that's available, to, like in this world. Like I know we got communicate communicative channels and stuff like that, and like all that is through the phone and this that. But at the end of the day, like I feel like they're taking away um, the real part of experiencing life and the real part of experiencing sports and experiencing college, in particular. Like it's not it's not just all through the phone. So I'll just say, bro, like like just. Put that phone down, man. Like, just find some time in the day to put it down, put it away, go do something different. Like, just like go for a drive or something. Like, do something. Just put the phone down. Like, that's my biggest advice, man. Cause, 
like I said, like you can't get away from it, but you know you can try and do things to you know limit it a little bit. Yeah, um, that's that was big for me. Um, the social media and learn how to navigate that because like you know I, I played um, two sports and I was really you know prominent on the cross side. And, you know, you get a post in this and a post in that, mm -hmm. and then you just blast it in the limelight. And then you click that little that little chat button. You yeah. see them comments, and it's like yeah. Some of them, some of them make you like, oh yeah, like I feel good about myself. But right. some of them like meant to deteriorate you. Right. And coming into that world in college, you're gonna see that three times as much. No, like definitely. you have a bad game and you playing in front of millions of people, mm -hmm. and that you're gonna know about it. You can have a great year. It's just that game that everybody watching. Mm -hmm. What are they gonna say? Oh, number twelve missed this many tackles. He dropped this. Man. He lost up. Maryland can't never like you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Seeing those, you you got to just gotta. Just gotta take it. Like, and then it'd be the things you already know about yourself, or like right. you already know about what happened in the game. You already, I mean, me personally, like, like, like I say, it's like anything <laughs> negative or positive, like I love it because, yeah. like, you know, like this is more fuel. You more fuel, so, yeah. yeah, that's it. Say, so like, after, after, do or no, just after a bad game, go to Twitter. And look up, search up your name, and see what pops up. <laughs> I, I, I do that. I do that every time. Every time. Every time. I do that every time. Every time. <laughs> every time. Like, every time. Like, oh boy. It never fails either. Uh, it don't. <laughs> to get hurt. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then another thing, like, bro, like, I go on Getty Images to like see, like, you know, if I get pictures like from mm -hmm. the game, yeah. just you know, aside from like the pictures we get, mm -hmm. they be doing this dirty, bro. Like, like all my pictures on Getty Images are like me getting stiff arms and missing tackle. I'm like, dang, like, knock it down. Like, like, like that's this all you catching? Like, I had, I had what eight tackles this game, and you caught that one? Like, that's crazy. Like, you feel me so. Yeah, like, like like I said, they D one in media, so they right. gonna do the, they gonna do their they best job. They balling with that yeah. with that camera. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's all good. Yeah, you you mentioned uh, putting that phone down and doing something else. Mm. Um, you're big on that. You play chess. You play Madden. You know, you, you, know, you chess? do. Yeah, I play chess. Mm -hmm. You do you do a lot. You know, you know, just touch about your you know, extracurricular activities. Man, I mean, speaking on chess, like I think that's the that's the closest game to life because you make one move and your opponent can make seven against you. So, like, like you got, you really have to be militant. Like, you can't – like, it's not like checkers. Like, me, I hate checkers. I hate that. I hate checkers. Like, I don't – I never want to play checkers again after playing chess because, like, I don't know. It just expands my thinking. And, it, like, it's a challenge, and I love a challenge always. Right. And then, like, playing Madden, like, I love Madden. Not only because it's a game, because like it's what I do. Like I'm, I'm playing football. Like literally, just playing football. Like, and I guess trying to implement our scheme into the game. Like I know it sounds crazy and it sounds funny and silly, but like I really do that. Like I really do that. Like, like all our coverages we run and stuff like that. Like I really put that in the game and see if it work against like a Tyreek Hill or like a. a just somebody else, like some somebody faster, somebody stronger, somebody like that. So, like, yeah, I play for fun, but I'm really not playing for fun. Like, I'm really like locked into like the game. You feel what I'm saying? So, like, all of that is like all of that helps me unwind from like you know my day to day, um, the lifting, the class, the running, the the practice, like the meetings, like anything anything that like is a necessity on my schedule, like those help me unwind. I journal a lot. Like I'm writing about like anything and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That does help my journal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, journal. Um, yeah, for chess though, every every move matters. That's uh -huh. what, like about life, you know. If you make a mistake, you you dealing with that for the rest of the game. On the bar. Next thing you know, you move you move a pawn too far, you move, you move that bishop too far, your queen gone. Now it's like, oh man, I'm, that was crazy. Yeah, so, like, <laughs> yeah man. Everybody yeah. rapping. Yeah, right. So, yeah. Um. You know, that's what, you know, as selfishly as an athlete I struggle with is finding that balance. Mm -hmm. It looks like you have a good, pretty good balance. You know, you keep the football with the football and mm -hmm. then off the field, off the field. I let it, I just mix it up. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to, I should be with y'all having fun, but I'm over here watching film. Like, right. oh, pick one. Right. Like, <laughs> right. You know, you've been stressed out too, all day too yeah. much. Like, why are you, you know, but uh, it's very, very big. And, in a person's life is to find that downtime to, you know, deload and depress and like get all that out of you. Mm. Like, journaling is something I, you know, I've been trying to do more. Um, 
just getting all that clutter out of your brain because it will affect your sleeping. No, definitely. It will affect your sleeping. And we no, need definitely. sleep. Yeah. Definitely, bro. I don't know. Most most thing I do is like for Fortnite, boy. Get on that. Yeah. Get on that fort. Yeah. That Fortnite. It's been a minute since I've been <laughs> on it too, though. It's been a minute. It's all that bat phone. It's been a minute too, though. But yeah, man, we get active. Like my my biggest thing, man. Like how I think personally, football is what I do. It's not who I am. So I'm not going. I'm not going to drown myself in football. I'm never going to do that. I could drop football today and be good tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like based off of. How I carry myself, how I speak. I can go into a room right now and get a job. Like no, no, no pressure, no nothing. But right. you know what I'm saying? That's not what I want to do in my life, obviously. I wanna, you know, make it to that next level. Um, and then, you know, be successful at that next level. But like I just try and make sure I'm well rounded. Not try, I'm doing. Like, you know, make sure I'm I'm well rounded, um, in all aspects. So there's no excuses for anything. Like I, I can do anything and everything, you know, so yeah, like, just, it's kind of like a backup. I don't want to say backup plan, but it kind of is. It's like. Bro, if plan, if plan A don't work, it's 25 more letters in the alphabet. So. <laughs> for real. You know what I'm saying? So. And it's like, you can't put all your eggs in one basket. Right. Like, right. you know, like, as, again, as athletes, we tend to do that mm-hmm. all the time. It's like, whatever sport you play, whatever that professional sport, that's our end goal, and that's the only goal we're going towards. Mm-hmm. But think about the percentages. They go down every level you go to. Yeah. College, you go to this percent. You go to professionals, you go to 1%. You part of the 1%. Yeah. And it's like, to make it there, you got to do a lot, sacrifice a lot. And it's like, a lot of people don't make it. Yeah. And it's like, what you going to do after that? So people thinking, oh, I don't got to go to class. Or I don't got to do this. I don't got to do this. I don't got to shake his hand. Like, connections matter. Everything matters. Like, you, you said you can walk in a room. And get a job. This mm-hmm. you're probably gonna have connections X Y Z from being able to do that. But that's just who you are, and that's what a lot of people need to figure out how to do in their life is just have that backup plan. Like, I don't want people when I leave this earth. I don't want people to know me just because I play football. Right. And like, how else are you gonna be remembered? How else did you exist on this world? And how many people did you impact? Is a big thing for me. Right. And just touching on class right quick. Like, I don't like school. Like, I only like school because if I don't do good in school, I cannot play football. Like, that's it. But, like, but like advice, though, like, I just started – everything's about perspective. And I started switching my thinking up a lot. Like, I see going to class as just, like, having a routine for myself. Just, like, a day-to-day. Like, like yes, I don't like going to class, but it's, it's, it's a routine thing for me. Like, it just keeps me on time. keeps me sharp. Like, like forces me, I guess, to – make sure I'm, you know, on track as far as routine go. Because, you know, how I think about it, if I don't go to class, I'm not going to, like, not go to a game or, like, not go to practice. Like, I'm going to get up for sure and make sure I'm at, I'm at practice on time. So like, it's, just, it's just routine for me, bro. It's, it, it just helps me, like, stay on, on track and on course. And like I told – I don't know if I told you when we were doing extra work. Like, I don't really do the extra work, like, for the games. Like, I don't really do that. I know that's going to come. But, like, I do that just to – like help me build a routine. Like yeah. this is what I this is what like I need to do to get to the top as far as like, you know, how I wanna look, how I wanna perform, where I wanna get to. Like all of that is for routine purposes. It's not even right. for like results. Cause I know consistency is gonna breed that. So right. yeah. It's all about like routine and just building that building good habits. Great habits. So Hey man. Um before we get off of this thing. We're going to end up with our one speed questions. I'm going to ask you a question. You give your answer as fast as possible. All right, let's do it. Game on the line. What quarterback are you taking on the final drive? I'm taking Tom. Okay. Tom okay. Brady. Favorite Drake song? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go hours in silence. Keep it recent. Okay, very recent. What's your go-to meal? Could be breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever. Go-to meal? Pasta. Pasta. Um, uh, so I cook a lot. So, but I only cook two meals. I cook chili with wh- with white rice and cornbread, or I cook pasta. Like, I like I cook some like ground turkey, whatever. Pasta, red sauce, bake it a little bit. We good. <laughs> so pasta is my is my go to. Okay, meal. cook it up. If you could teleport anywhere in the world, where would you go? Um, Florida. Miami. 
So, uh, for a lot of them. You been there. <laughs> Nah, uh, on, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. On a serious note, though, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go back to the motherland. I'm gonna go back to the motherland. Go back to Africa. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. All right, this last one might be a little too kind of verse. painful a little bit. Scooter to the ankle or land on your tailbone? Scooter to the ankle. We gonna shape back. We, we, bro, we, we gonna Boy, shape back. Tailbone, you bro, ain't. scooter to the ankle, we gonna shape back in ten, we gonna shape back in about 10 to 20 minutes. We gonna shape back. Ooh. But like that tailbone, like you, bro. Boy. Bro, bro, no, this, this is no lie. I had a tailbone. I hurt my tailbone one time. I promise you, dog. Like, I was, I was physically weak. I couldn't do anything. I, I really couldn't do anything. It was, I was physically weak for sure. Like for sure, for sure. It affected everything. You know what I'm saying? So everything that affected like, like everything, bro. Like, like you cannot, you cannot shake back from that. Like, it's gonna take a minute. But I'm, I'm gonna definitely say that scooter to the ankle. That razor sure. scooter to the ankle. Man, Cold look. outside, you husky on the ankle. I'm gonna be running tomorrow though. Yeah, man. I'm gonna be running tomorrow. You hear the clink too. That's how you know. <laughs> and you just drop. Nah, it, it was worse. Like when, you, when like it hit you hard enough, like where it cut you. Oh yeah. 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 But I'm still. I'm gonna take that over the tailbone. If you ever had a tailbone, oh my god. Hey, I might have to. T I might have to take the scooter to the ankle oh too, because the tailbone it gets treacherous. That ain't no joke, boy. Bro. I had my mom. I had a massage chair in my house. My mom would would force me to sit sit on the massage chair, and she would put she would position a ball on the tailbone and just have it like rub out. Like, bro, I promise you, I'm crying real tears. I'm not, I'm not playing, y'all. Couldn't do it. Crying real tears, but like I mean, it helped it a lot. Like it got it got the swelling out and stuff, whatever. But man, nah, man. Never, I don't wish that on my worst. Type. Never. Yeah, I don't, I don't wish that on nobody. Real. Yeah, uh, but I had to sell like them donuts things. You feel me? But like yeah. that ain't help. <laughs> that ain't help either. <laughs> that ain't help. That ain't help either. Nah, man. Oh my god. For sure. I remember. Oh. Now nah, I don't even wanna. Like next. Yeah, but um, you know, wrapping up on that, you know, we got some got some drip on. This yeah. is light. This is this a light day today. Yeah, he be he, he, be, he be putting it on. He be. This, this is, is definitely. Just, I don't know if you can see this. Ooh, is a light day okay. today. This is okay. Cooler. Definitely light for it's cooler. It's cooler. It's okay. cooler. Any yeah, any man. shout outs? Uh, shout out my mom always. Um, got got to show her love. Always, I love you, mom. Always, got to show her love. Uh, shout out my pod, come different podcast yeah, Woody K. Be in the link. Um, yeah, come different podcast Woody K. Um, episode dropping real soon. Going to gonna be dropping this month, so just be aware for that. Um, shout out to the team, man. Shout out to SB. Yeah. Uh, Members, yeah. Shout out SB. Shout out to uh, supporters, man. Just shout out to everybody who believes in us. You know, everybody who believes in us. Shout out to y'all, and shout out to everybody who don't believe in us, as well. We love y'all too. So we need y'all too. It's all love. I mean, how can the community reach you, man? Instagram, Twitter, uh, Ru handles. Ruben knows on Instagram. Um, Ruben knows one on Twitter, and then. Uh, for the podcast, come different podcasts on Instagram and on TikTok. Hey man, it was grateful to have you on here. Always, but you know, know. always bleed. You know, bleed. Yeah. Uh, hey, yeah, you know, yeah. We're gonna wrap it up. Thank you for tuning into the One Speed Podcast. See y'all next time.